everyone. Welcome to 6-5 on the road from Las Vegas, Nevada at Dell Tech World 2024. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson having some great conversations on the program with Dell and its fantastic wide and deep ecosystem of partners. We're pleased to welcome Dennis Makashima to the program, VP and GM Brocade Storage Networking at Broadcom. Dennis, great to have you. Great, uh, thanks, for, thanks for having me on and I'm glad to be here. So we were talking before we started filming, we all have, you guys have a lot of connections in common, like that's that's tech, right? This this uh, just great relationships, every Dell tangled Tech world. Web. It's a tangled is, web, It's a tangled Lisa. web, but it's like a reunion every time, which I love. But I want to, you've been at Brocade for a long time. Talk a little bit, if you will, about the Dell partnership. We saw Michael on stage yesterday with a plethora of partners and we know how important the ecosystem is to them. Give us that snapshot into the relationship. Yes, so um, as you mentioned, I've been with Brocade uh, quite a long time. Brocade has even a longer history in, um, in, in the storage world, and um, Dell as well has been in uh, the storage world uh, quite some time. So uh, Dell has a long, rich history in storage. Back in the early 90s, they developed a product line that they call Symmetrics, and um, that's been synonymous for decades of being the leading mission-critical storage solution and uh, Brocade almost as long, so maybe mid to late 90s, Brocade developed fiber channel switches, and um, Brocade switches connect to Dell storage, and um, Dell produces the servers, and, and uh, so the, the joint solution is Dell storage, Brocade storage networking switches uh, connected to the Dell servers, and um, another thing that's unique about uh, the re relationship is um, we have, um, uh, our products are, are OEM'd by Dell, so they're Dell branded, so it's a Dell solution end to end, and uh, we, we work really uh, closely with, with Dell to, to make it a, a, a seamless solution for uh, our joint customers. So fiber channel switching, alive and well. Alive and well. So, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the, the death and demise of uh, the fiber channel SAN was, was uh, much exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> We're still going very strong, and uh, our, our niche is um, running the world's mission critical workloads, and um, our technology, as well as uh, Dell storage technology, is, is really well suited for those, those applications. And um, one thing is, uh, is while the applications um, need the reliability and the performance, then um, you know, we remain the best solution for that. Can you talk a little bit about how the partnership has evolved post the Broadcom acquisition and maybe dig in a little bit to some of the joint GTM, the engineering that you guys are doing together to really give the customers what they need? So um, as I mentioned, you know, we develop the, the fiber channel switches that are used to connect the servers and the storage together and Dell provides the, the, uh, the storage solution um, as well as the servers and so um, it since it all connects together uh, via fiber channel technology, it needs to work seamlessly end to end. And um, one of the first things that we need to do is make sure it works seamlessly end to end. So that starts with the standards. So we both participate in uh, the fiber channel T11 standards and uh, develop that standard together. Uh, we were some of the leading companies in the standard from the beginning. And, um, but it's not enough to just write the standard and, and, and code to the standard, develop to the standard, you also need to test it. So um, for, for decades, what we would do is they would give us feedback um, into our testing. We have Dell products in our labs, uh, specified by, by Dell what products they want us to have in our labs, and then they would give us guidance on what, what testing they want us to do, I and mean, we have a lot of our own testing as well that we do. And then on, on the flip side, uh, they have our products in, in their labs, and. Um, they will, uh, they will, we will give them guidance and training and then they will test our products in their labs and so we joint test and make sure it works seamlessly end to end. Uh, another thing that we've done is uh, we've evolved the technology over the years, uh, collaborated on, on new, um, new features and the standards. Uh, one a good example is we work together on um, a technology that we call fabric notifications or FPIN in the standards, and a couple of the things that this allows uh, the, the solution to do is, um, one example is if you have congestion in the network, um, you know, a lot going on in the network, a lot of traffic, and if you have congestion, 
we were able to tell the endpoints to slow down to mitigate the congestion. Another thing that we're able to do is some of these environments are very large, yeah. and there's a lot of cables, a lot of optics, and um, it's, it's inevitable that those cables or optics may, may fail, or what's sometimes worse is if they degrade, and then you have a sick but not dead situation. So we are able to detect the sick but not dead situation, and then what we do is we'll tell the endpoints, specifically the multi-pathing layers in the servers, which uh, Dell has a, has a solution for called PowerPath. Um, so we could tell the HBA and then the, uh, the MPIO layer in the server that there was a marginal issue in, in one fabric and then the, uh, the multi-pathing layer will uh, favor the other side. And so they're able to route around marginal issues and remain 100% uh, uptime. So I've got a question for you. Why? Uh, if you were to go back 10 years and ask someone to predict, a lot of people would have said that by now, everything would be going over Ethernet, that, uh, that, the, that the fiber channel storage area network would no longer be relevant. And there, are, there were a whole bunch of rational reasons for why that would be predicted to be true. But why hasn't that happened? And, and, be, and before you answer that, what, uh, because I'm genuinely curious, because I don't know the answer to this question, where are we now? We went from one to two to four to eight to 16. What, what's, the, what's the current bandwidth per, per, per channel? Are we, is it 32 gig per? Uh, currently 64 gig, 64. Gen, 7, Gen 7 fiber channel. 60, okay, so Gen 7 is 64. Okay, but so why, why hasn't the fiber channel SAN gone away? It's a relatively expensive thing, right? That's a good question. So uh, fiber channel is, um, is the leader in running mission critical workloads uh, over storage networks, and um, I think it's, it's really a, a joint testament to the quality and reliability that we've designed into our fabrics. So um, we, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we understand that um, Dell customers are, are running uh, mission critical workloads, um, banking transactions, airline reservations, you name it, and um, so we've designed our products from the ground up to, uh, to, to be able to run flawlessly in these mission critical um, environments. Um, that, that goes uh, to the testing that we do, um, the design of the ASIC, the hardware, the software. We have HA built in at all levels of, of, uh, of the product. Um, we put in advanced capabilities. For example, um, we have the ability to, uh, to separate traffic into virtual channels, which are like little virtual links within a physical link. And then not only do we have uh, these, these virtual channels, but we can do things like if we detect bad behaving flows, which is, for example, an application, if we d detect uh, bad behavior, we can move the flow to its own virtual channel, so into its own swim lane, so to speak, and, um, and protect the rest of the traffic. So you haven't just increased bandwidth over time? Correct. So this has not been a situation where fiber channel switching networking, storage networking technology has remained static, but bandwidth has opened up. You've actually improved on the functionality. Right. And then speaking of these Ethernet uh, technologies, there is storage workloads that run on Ethernet technologies, and that's been emerging over the years uh, with, with the, uh, um, the evolution of technologies like iSCSI, NVMe over fabric, uh, NAS runs over, over Ethernet, and Dell storage has Ethernet ports on it today, as well as Dell servers will have NICs with Ethernet. And uh, so there are workloads that run on Ethernet, and one of the things that we've done is uh, we have Ethernet ports, uh, we have dual personality ports on our director products, and we have a technology that we call unified storage fabric, and we are able to take, um, Ethernet storage workloads into our switches and then run it over our, our fiber channel network. Um, we believe we're, we're well suited to take the mission critical workloads and put them on onto our environment. Um, and uh, if the workload is running fine on a pure Ethernet uh, environment, then, then it could run there. But if it's mission critical high performance, we believe bringing it onto the fiber channel uh, SAN um, that brocade develops is, is, uh, is a good solution. Yeah, during Michael Dell's keynote, I mean, I, I keep seeing the signs 
Dell World 2024, the AI edition. Lots of news yesterday about AI, their ambitions. How does the relationship with Brocade support those lofty ambitions that, that Dell has for AI? Good question. So I've, I've talked about mission critical workloads running on, on Dell storage on, on the Brocade networks. And um, you know, these workloads are uh, you know, some of the biggest industries that, that, that you know of, airline reservations, banking transactions, credit checks, um, government, medical, and these, these applications um, are ripe for analysis by AI applications. And so the AI applications need to get the data off of the Dell storage and uh, ingest it through our, uh, our, our fiber channel networks and, and then um, do their thing. So when someone talks about building a, a net new training or inference cluster, they're typically not thinking, I'm going to build a fiber channel SAN to do that. But none of this on that side of the house matters if you don't have the data. Correct. And the data is managed, especially mission critical application environments. That data is often, it does often include fiber channel SANs. I say that gleefully because as we discussed earlier, I've been in this storage side of things for a very, very long time. And, uh, and I just think it's fantastic that we still have, that, you know, that we're still sort of king of the data center. <laughs> in certain regards, but is that, the, is that the right way to look at it? It's not that you're building AI solutions specifically with fiber channel SANS, it's just that the important data happens to live in the environment that Correct. you right. manage. Yep. Yeah? So in our last minute or so here, Dennis, I'd love for you to kind of take us out. You talked about the, str the strength of the GTM partnership, the, its evolution. Is there a customer story that you can share, even by industry, that really shines the spotlight on the depth of the Dell Brocade partnership? Uh, I can think of a couple of examples, but uh, basically our uh, joint go-to-market is, um, you know, so Dell's brand is very important to Dell. It, the Dell brand is synonymous with, with quality, high performance, and um, we've worked very closely together to, to make sure that, that that brand stays true, uh, whether it be our technology or, uh, or go-to-market. So uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, our products are OEM'd by Dell and uh, branded Dell, and, and we do a lot to make sure that it's a seamless experience for the customers. And uh, one of the things that we do is we collaborate um, on, on a bunch of aspects. I, I talked already about how we collaborate on engineering, yeah. but we also collaborate on marketing. So we do a lot to, uh, uh, we help fund the, the marketing of our joint solution. We, um, we train, uh, help with sales enablement, our, uh, our, our sales forces need to work collaboratively together. And uh, Dell Salesforce, you know, they're the front lines, but you know, also our sales force is there helping out. And if they need us to work behind the scenes, we'll do that. If they need us to be at the forefront, if the, if the uh, information exchange gets a little deeper, then, then uh, you know, we could be at the forefront. And then it also uh, comes back to the support organizations yeah. too. We have a unified front um, uh, for if, if there are ever issues at, at the customers, then um, you know Dell support is is uh, at the forefront. And then um, you know we're we're backing them up. But if the if the problem gets gets a little deeper and and our support organization needs to interact with the customers, then 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 we're there to do that um, to help out uh, for for issues that may arise. And um, we both have world class support organizations and. That's part of what, uh, what makes us able to support these mission critical workloads that our customers run. Right, and there's, those are only going to be increasing. Dennis, we thank you so much for coming on the program, really diving into the evolution of the Dell Brocade relationship, the value in it for your joint customers, all the great things that you're doing together to ensure that those customers get the support that they need and demand. We appreciate your insights. Thank you. All right, for our guests and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching 6.5 On the Road from Vegas. We're covering Dell Tech World 2024, the AI edition. We'll be back later with some more great content.